Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Pat the Sound Guy, your friendly neighborhood sound guy, back with another video. You're probably wondering what this big, humongous pile of cable is doing on my bench. Well, this is a 100 foot XLR microphone cable build. Why do I need to make a 100 foot cable, you ask? Well, this is for a church install. I got a uh, call to a church last week to diagnose a strange problem. There were voices coming from the microphone when there was no one in front of the microphone. Nah, it's not as creepy as you think. What was happening is there is a choir microphone in this particular church. It's hanging overhead of the choir. It has a small microphone about this big but maybe it's a little smaller than the size of this microphone connector. And it has a small skinny, skinny cable that goes up and into the ceiling. And then it goes to a connector by the wall in this particular church. And it goes into a small analog mixer with another length of microphone cable. And what's happening is we're getting radio interference. And it's not just any radio interference. We're getting FM radio from one of the local radio stations. So when you turn up the gain on the microphone enough to get enough sensitivity to the microphone properly, you hear 89.9 the wave. So that doesn't work very well for a church service, I would think. So uh, we have a good piece of cable here. This is proper install cable. And this is hopefully going to solve the issue because I did a bunch of troubleshooting uh, last week. And the regular microphone cable is just not shedding enough of the interference with the shield of the cable that the cable has. It has a braided shield. And this particular cable we've got here, this has a foil shield. So this has 100% coverage all through this cable, where a braided cable sometimes doesn't have enough coverage. And you can get leakage in through the braid on the outside of the cable to keep the noise out. So what happens is radio interference and noise is supposed to hit the shield and be sent to the ground of the cable, which there's a little ground right there. And sometimes that just doesn't have enough shielding, even though it's it, there's shield all over it and it's braided, it doesn't do it. So this foil shield keeps that radio interference from coming at those center conductors. So you see there's the center conductors there. So th hopefully this nice long cable you know shorter cable is best but sometimes you just don't have that option you can't put your mixer right next to a cable and so you have to have long cables so what we're going to do is we're going to make this nice properly shielded cable meant for that purpose uh we'll put some extra layer microphone ends on it and we're going to add these wonderful little doofflickies right here they call these there's a couple different names for them, uh, ferrite beads or ferrite cores. And you put those, snap those on the cable on either end. And that should help cancel out a lot of that interference. Those are generally seen on a lot of audio cables, uh, a lot of video cables usually uh, to keep the video looking good. Sometimes you'll see them on VGA cables and the like. So as you can see, I've already started stripping one end here, so I could show you what the two different you know, states of the cable is. There's the foil shield we haven't stripped off yet, and there's the end of the cable. So I'll grab the uh, wire strippers, and we'll strip off the rest of that foil shield, and we'll continue on making this cable. I've got the ends of the wire stripped off here, nice and proper, proper lengths that I'm looking for. And now, here is a great tip on soldering cables sometimes i will use a small vise or a bench vise or a pair of vise grips or locking pliers to put these connectors into to keep them from wandering around when i'm trying to solder them but here's a great tip the cable tester got both types of cable connections on it so what you can do is you can say okay you don't have to worry about chasing that all over the bench that gives you a way to hold your cable sometimes at different angles so you can see those connectors and we'll open one of these connectors up for you so 
there's female connector. And we can pop that in there, just like that. Now, here's one thing we got to remember when you're doing cables, is that even the pros will tell you, they do this once in a while, is forgetting to put this little feller onto the cable before you solder it. Because otherwise, you're unsoldering that wonderful soldering job you did to try and put that on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin those up first so I don't wreck the ends of these cables up. And we'll put that on there. We'll put this guy on here. You see, it likes to fetch up and catch up. So if you tin the ends of the leads first, things will go together a lot easier. There we go. Let's focus in on the three pins on this connector. So the first pin we're going to focus on in here is this guy right here. That's pin two. This guy over here is pin one, and this is pin three. So this pin one is ground, and that's going to go to our shield. Pin two is what they call the hot, and pin three is what you call cold. Now, you want to make sure that you get the same color code on either end. So we're going to pick red for pin 2, black for pin 3, and then the shield or the drain or the ground is going to go to pin 1. It's very important to get that correct on either end. So pin 2 goes to pin 2, so red to pin 2 on either end because the polarity is important. Pin 2 is here on our left. So we'll put a little bit of fresh solder on pin 2 and pin 3 and pin 1. And there is flux rosin core in the solder. So of course it nice flows nice when you do that. And since this is already tinned up, this should be as simple as... Putting a wire in the pin and bang, just like that. See so if we can get a better picture of this one here. Trick is heat the components, not the solder itself. Bang, flows right in. So you don't, if it doesn't flow right, you don't either have enough heat or you don't have enough flux or both. And then our ground goes on here like so. Can you see? Yes, you can see. Sometimes you have to finagle a little bit to get that wire to stay where you want it to. Now that we've soldered all the connections in here, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little jumper to connect this ground, pin 1, to this tab here. And what that's going to do is continue our shielding with the barrel of the XLR connector. So what that does is that connects ground to these barrels and that what that'll do is that'll keep everything shielded so all this exposed wire in here that doesn't have the foil shield around it will be shielded still so we don't have any interference leaking in at those internal wires now we're taking our time with this because you normally you can make a cable in you know just a minute or so if you're quick at it and you're practiced at it we're just taking our time so you can see how this goes together And again, I want to make sure you put that cap on there. On this connector, since it's the opposite end, we have to remember that pin 1 is now on the opposite side. So, put a little fresh solder and flux on all those connections in here.
can be a little difficult when you're trying to do this on camera. Of course, we can't forget our jumper. As you can see, a little flicker from the camera, but that's not a big deal. So our three pins are going exactly where they're supposed to be going, and there's no intermittence. I'm going to snap on my wonderful ferrite beads, and this cable is good to go. And there we have it, one completed cable. I'd like to thank you for joining me today, watching this video. Please subscribe, uh, give a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one.